the topic of discussion that we are going to talk about is we are going to talk about cranial nerve number three that is oculomotor nerve now in this lecture what we'll do we'll be talking about the columns where these cranial nerve are present we'll be talking about the course of cranial nerve we'll be talking about what we'll be talking about the distribution of cranial nerve we'll be talking about the injury right what will happen if there will be injury in cranial nerve so without delay let's begin our discussion now this cranial nerve where they are present they are present in midbrain in midbrain at the level of what superior colliculus right colliculus now what is this if you remember our lecture on what nuclei and columns of cranial nerve then you'll know that these right third cranial nerve where they were present they were present in midbrain right in midbrain and they were present in which column they were present in column of our gse general somatic efferent and also in they they were uh, running in uh, running parallel with our what these right edinger westphal nucleus edinger westphal nucleus in gve general visceral efferent right okay yes i think we are clear about what we're clear that these are present in <coughs> nuclei right these are these cranial nerve number three nuclei are present in what midbrain at the level of superior colliculus in where in general sensory efferent right in general sensory efferent what they were doing sorry general somatic efferent they were supplying extra ocular muscle if you remember general somatic efferent these are responsible uh, for carrying impulses right impulses to what extraocular muscle and hypoglossus muscle and in that extraocular muscle if you remember every extraocular muscle was supplied by this third cranial nerve except uh, our what superior oblique and what lateral rectus right so we can say that these what in gse what they were supplying they were supplying uh, extraocular ocular muscles in gve what they were supplying in gve right they were moving in parallel with our this uh, edinger westphal nucleus and they were what they were supplying what they were supplying smooth muscle and our that gland some of the glands and in gsa in efferent column they were also responsible for proprioception of extraocular muscles so let's talk about its course now talking about course what is this this is our section of our midbrain now in this midbrain what is this this is dorsal aspect and this is the ventral part this is dorsal part and in the, this is ventral part now in this dorsal part what we have we have superior colliculus right superior colliculus and in this ventral part what we have is we have cerebral peduncle right cerebral peduncles now between the cerebral peduncle there is inter what inter uh, pedun peduncular space right space now what happens is that now our this trigeminal nerve it is where it is present it is present in this column in this column what are these column two columns these two columns are our what obviously second sorry third cranial nerve uh, nuclei what are these this is one nuclei this is another nuclei these are present by joining together and just aside beside of these these are what uh, edinger westphal nuclei right so let's focus right here now from these from these what are these this is third nuclei now what are these nuclei what are these nuclei i hope you are clear about it these are the cell bodies right cell bodies in cns right cell bodies in cns so here second cranial nerve nuclei what they will do is they will emerge on ventral surface what is this this is the ventral surface right emerge on the ventral surface of this midline now it will pass between what it will pass between two arteries what are these two arteries what is this this is our posterior cerebral artery and this is superior cerebellar artery now as it passes uh, between these two arteries where it will go it will go into medial uh, sorry middle cranial fossa and in that middle cranial fossa we have got cavernous sinus now what is this this is a cavernous sinus and in this cavernous sinus it will go laterally it will go what it will go laterally now as it will go laterally what it will do is now here through this what what is this superior orbital fissure superior orbital fissure from this superior orbital fissure it will divide into two parts upper, upper division right and lower division and it will enter into what is this this is our um, it will enter into our what orbital cavity now in this orbital cavity this upper division is supply is what what is this doing it is this it is uh, supplying what it is supplying our levator palpebral superius right and superior rectus lower division is supplying what it is supplying middle rectus uh, inferior rectus and what interior oblique muscles so all these muscles right are supplied by what these are supplied by trigeminal nerve only there are other two muscles our what lateral rectus supplying by sixth cranial nerve 
and superior oblique we have supplying supplied by what fourth cranial nerve so these are the distribution of what these are the distribution of our uh, our oculomotor nerve now talking about what talking about what talking about okay uh, what is this this is the zoom in diagram of our same these these nucleus right this our this third cranial nerve nucleus now in this third cranial in this nucleus if you will see clearly they are joined together now here the extra ocular muscles right the nerve supplying extra ocular muscles are what they are ipsilateral right they are arising from the same side right from the origin they are supplying the same side and here also you can see right origin also is on the same side and it is also going from to the same side but if you talk about what superior rectus right the muscle supplying what superior rectus these are what these are originating right here but they go into another nucleus and supply the contralateral part that means they decussate where they decussate they decussate at the place of what at the place of the nuclei only nucleus only so here what will happen if there will be injury right if uh, there will be injury in any of these knob that means the knob supplying what is this superior rectus uh, or extraocular muscle such as if there is injury is right here then what will happen what there will be ipsilateral involvement that means in this side only there will be what there will be damage uh, damage in action right there is there is damage uh, or there is no action <coughs> right here uh, which was performed by this superior rectus now similarly if there will be uh, damage in this extraocular uh, muscle uh, uh, right the nerve supplying extraocular muscle then there will be what there will be ipsilateral involvement but what will happen if there will be involvement in these right in this nucleus in in a whole then what will happen if there will be the damaging in this whole nucleus what will happen is that there will be ipsilateral involvement of this extraocular muscle but bilateral involvement of sr uh, sr muscle right okay now superior rectus supplying superior why because if this nucleus will be damaged then what will happen obviously in this region what are the things that are originating from this region that is our extraocular muscles that will be damaged ipsilateral on same side but here what will happen is that here these our this uh, superior rectus is what it is this decussating right here and it is moving into another side so there will be what there will be damaging of this also and as you can see here this uh, the knob supplying superior rectus is also coming from here and going to right here that means in this region these both these both that means the both our superior rectus the knob supplying superior rectus both of these will get what this will get damage that means bilateral both of these will get damage and ipsilateral damage of extraocular muscles but these one will not get damage so if there will be third uh, nucleus injury what will happen ipsilateral uh, ipsilateral extra uh, extra ocular mus uh, muscles nuclei will be involved but bilateral what are the superior rectus muscle will be involved okay <coughs> now now these are some of the uh, cranial nerve injury and injury in what now these nerve supplying our this lps levator papillary uh, papillary br uh, palpebra superior now the nerve supplying this muscle what will happen if there will be damage in nerve supplying this region there will be what ipsilateral ptosis similarly to medial rectus there will be ipsilateral divergent squint if there will be injury in this three muscle supplying nerve what will be happen what will be happening ipsilateral down and outward eyeball similarly ipsilateral sorry if there will be problem in spincher pupilla what will happen there will be excessive dilatation of pupil pupil right similarly if there will be injury in muscle supplying this ciliaris muscle there will be loss of accommodation so this was all about what cranial number cranial nerve number three hope you get it thank you and have a great time